Welcome back. I've got a few different products coming from a few different countries over the next few days, so I thought I'd break this up into the segments and install them as I receive them. Today I've got for the new CT build a pretty groovy looking seat. So I ordered this from Bike Seat Factory in Vietnam. It actually shipped really quick. DHL from any country ends up getting here in just a few days. But kind of a banana shaped seat with diamond stitch pattern in the middle. This is kind of a mesh material and then on the sides uh, a faux leather but really like the way that it looks and I think it's gonna look pretty cool on the bike. I found that it's easier to do all of the bracket mounting onto the frame of the bike first and then mount the seat onto the hinge last because the pin that goes through the hinge uh, you can't push it through once it's already mounted to the seat. At the same time I also ordered a new uh, top frame molding. I'm actually gonna leave this blue coating on it just because I'm probably gonna be pulling uh, the seat on and off a few times and don't want to scuff it up. I may actually end up going with a carbon fiber one in the end but uh, just figured I'd get this one on for now. It just kind of slips in the front and then snaps down. Okay, and then for the seat mount, this should go on actually after the gas uh, tank cap that goes here. But since I don't have that yet, I'm just going to mount this directly to the frame. And then use the second hinge piece, put the pin through, and then I'll mount the seat to that. I also have the rear latch to capture the back of the seat to lock it down. I'm only lightly tightening it for now because again, I'm going to need to remove it before I put in the gas tank. Also, you really do need to buy the Honda bolt that goes through this instead of just a bolt that you'd pick up from Ace Hardware because uh, the outside diameter is pretty wide and then it necks down. And there's only one way that it can go through. You can see that the hole on one side is wider to accommodate the shaft of the rod and then the smaller side uh, only supports the threaded portion of this bolt. Then the rear latch just files through the hole here on the side and then just two uh, M6 bolts lock it down to the frame. All right and then for mounting the seat it's just mounting these two posts at the front of the seat to the two holes in the bracket and these just use a washer and an M6 nut. I received another package from Japan this afternoon. This is the full titanium over racing exhaust for the CT70. On my other CT190, I did the over racing stainless steel exhaust, uh, but this titanium exhaust is extremely light. I like how it has this burnt uh, blue color on the edge, uh, and actually across the whole pipe, there's some of that burnt look. Plus, I really like this uh, over racing aluminum badge that it has. So, super cool. This should be a really quick install. Let's get this on the bike. All right, so unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get this exhaust on with the Trail Buddy stand because the way this exhaust comes under the center of the bike interferes with the center post. So I'm gonna set this aside and I'll do this install once this is a roller. Okay, another day, another part for this build. This is the Kahin PE28 a carburetor. I used the same carb on the Zongshen 190cc build that I did previously. A really cool carb, there's a couple of neat features that I'll point out. Uh, and then this is also directly from Sudco, or it's from a vendor who orders it directly from Sudco. I've seen a lot of fake K and particularly the P28 models, so make sure that you're ordering it from a reputable dealership. And in the end, it should actually be coming from Sudco because that's who's importing these into the United States. So this is the box that it comes in. Let me do a quick unboxing and show you what it looks like. Not too much to see inside here for off-road use only. A couple cool Sudco stickers. So here's the carburetor up close. Something interesting about this particular setup is that it has a secondary fuel circuit. So instead of having a choke where there'd be a butterfly that opens and closes and the choke would just 
prevent air from coming in as quickly. It has a secondary circuit where when you pop this up, it has fuel going through a different uh, jetting setup so that it acts like a, a choke as far as having it run more rich, but it doesn't have a butterfly in here to interrupt the flow of uh, air coming through. So my understanding is that since this is a performance carburetor, you don't want any turbulence coming through the air inlet, uh, which you would have if you had a butterfly, even if it's open, it's definitely causing some disturbances. So by having this uh, secondary fuel circuit to handle the choke type mechanism for cold starts, you have a nice clean open inlet for air coming through. Unlike the Zongshan motor, the Daytona 190 has two mounting options for the intake manifold so that you can either have it running straight along the axis of the engine so that your carburetor can sit here more like the stock CT70 setup, or you can have it offset for larger carburetors that need to hang off the side where you also have air filters that are gonna take up more space. I would love to run it straight and have it look a little more like the original CT70 uh, setup, but there's just not enough space. Even if I set this up to have the uh, throttle cable angled a little differently, there wouldn't be any room left for the air filter. So I'm going to have to use the similar offsetting that I did on the Zongshen 190. By default, the Zongshen 190 had this cant off to the side. So I'm gonna mount this to the engine. It comes with this rubber adapter block that uh, mounts to this, then connects the carburetor here, then we'll add a uh, air filter, and that should be the extent of the assembly that I'm gonna get done today. I'm not gonna be able to do the cabling until I have handlebars and cables to control it, but that will then complete the major performance modifications that are on this bike. The main one, of course, being the engine itself, uh, the exhaust system, and then now this carburetor. The Daytona kit came with the correct size uh, gasket for the intake manifold, so I'm going to line it up to the offset configuration that I'm going to use. And then the included intake manifold that also came with the kit. On these M6 bolts going into aluminum, make sure that you're only torquing it down to 9 foot-pounds or 108 inch-pounds. And I have a couple of different air filters that I may be using for now. I'm just going to throw on this UNI 50 millimeter filter that I have from a previous bike just to make sure that I keep all the dust and everything out of it. Honestly, I think that looks pretty simple and it fits really nicely. There's uh, just about a finger's width of gap between the edge of the filter and the frame and everything comes at the same angle. So I like the way that that looks. Okay, so as simple as that was, this really is the extent of the horsepower making performance parts on this, on this build. Again, I don't have the exhaust on, and I'll get that on as soon as I get it off of the stand just because the way that the piping comes under the engine, it wouldn't fit while it's on the stand, but that really is just two bolts at the exhaust header and one that holds it at the top uh, rear shock mount to get on as soon as I get the, the bike on two wheels. But happy with the way all of this looks um, and the quality of all of these products are, are really good. I've already used the P28 car before, so I know how to tune it. I also have Kahin carbs on my CB650. Those are the CR29 specials, but they have the similar bypass system for the choke. And I, and I learned a lot about jetting as I put that bike together. So uh, having to only manage one carb at a time is a lot more simple and uh, should be pretty straightforward to getting this jetted correctly once I get everything running. So next steps are going to be electrical before I can get the uh, fuel tank and those lines run. So stay tuned and subscribe for upcoming videos on that. And it really won't be too long before this thing is fired up and then running. So thanks everybody for watching. Stay tuned for more videos and keep on building.